Isn't it strange that four of the top 10 most massive stars within 1,000 light years are all part of the constellation of Orion? It occupies a minuscule position in our skies, but even weirder, Orion is on the freeway out of the Milky Way, yet there they are. Rigel, Betelgeuse, Save and Company. What would Orion actually look like if we were closer to it? It has so many huge stars in such a very little space and it's right here in our local neighbourhood. Hi everyone, Vega here and in today's video we're going to look more closely at the Hunter constellation, so let's get to it. Orion is a prominent constellation located on the celestial equator and it's visible throughout the world. Indeed, it is one of the most conspicuous and recognisable constellations of all in the night sky. As many as 10 stars in Orion are currently known to have planets. The Siberians thought Orion was under also, and Alpha Tauri Aldebaran was its arrow. In J.R.R. Tolkien's Middle Earth, Orion was known as Menelvagor, which is Sindarin, a swordsman of the sky. Covering 594 square degrees, Orion is a relatively unremarkable 26th largest of the 88 constellations in the sky. So why does it have so many large stars? If we look closer at the principal stars of Orion, we'll see the usual suspects of Betelgeuse and Ritual, together as Alpha and Beta Orionics. But that's not where the giant stars end. Al Ninam, Al Nitak, Mintaka, Seif, Bellatrix, and Mesa are all large B class or O class stars. Even with the exception of Bellatrix and possibly Al Ninam, they can all be found within a relatively short distance of each other, 350 light years at most. All of those big stars are that close together, it must have an amazing effect on the night skies in that area of the galaxy. Over the past few weeks, while doing the most massive local stars videos, curiosity was spiked when I noted that at least 5, possibly even 7 of the top 20 most massive stars in our local area belong to the constellation of Orion. I found this information fascinating, in fact so fascinating that I thought it deserved a video. And if viewers like this idea, I may start a new series documenting the major stars of each constellation. It seems the channel star orientated videos tend to be more successful, whereas solar system ones less so. I suppose this makes sense as there are many channels out there documenting Saturn, Jupiter and Neptune, but less so that document Al Nitak, Al Inam and Mesa. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see more of this. Orion is actually a very useful aid to locating other stars. By extending the line of the belt southeastwards you find Sirius. Northwestwards, as we already mentioned, is Aldebaran. A line eastward across the two shoulders indicates the direction of Procyon, and a line from Rigel through Betelgeuse points towards Castor and Pollux, the Gemini twins. If it's clear tonight, why not take a look and see for yourselves? The stars in Orion also hold their own when compared in a ranking of the most brightest stars in the sky. Team Orion contains as many as seven of the top 70 stars, and that means up to 70 at least, Orion contains one out of every ten of the brightest stars in the sky. When we look at the night sky, Orion is certainly not a run-of-the-mill constellation. It's clearly backed up also then by the facts of the matter. Indeed, at the very brightest, Richard and Betelgeuse both comfortably enter the top ten brightest stars, and that, of course, includes the sun. If it were a Taurus sign within Orion, Barnard's Loop would be our first Orion in destination. Named after the astronomer Barnard, also very well known for Barnard's star, it is an emission nebula located in the Orion Molecular Cloud Complex with an apparent magnitude of 5. Possible to see without binoculars, Barnard's Loop is around 1600 light years away and contains both the dark horse head and bright Orion Nebula. The loop takes the form of an arc centred approximately on the Orion Nebula. The stars within this nebula are believed to be responsible for ionising the loop, and some have theorised that this nebula was formed in a supernova explosion around 2 million years ago. So, what if we could move closer to the Orion constellation and see all of those wonderful stars at closer range? Let's take away Bellatrix for now and leave it behind us, as it's much closer to us than the other stars. What would our skies look like if we moved into orbit around Kappa Orionis, the bright white blue B-class star of SAFE? Let's have a look. The habitable zone of SAFE, by my calculations, to have an Earth-like world, we'd need to be approximately 60 billion kilometres away, 400 astronomical units. SAFE is indeed a very powerful star, and therefore an Earth-like planet could be possible around 10 times further away from the Sun than our own final planet Neptune. To put that in perspective, this world would be 1 157th of a light year away from the star, and it would be perfectly habitable. These stars are truly incredible, aren't they, if you indeed know just how far a light year really is. 
In the next graphic, we see a picture of the interesting northern British town of Manchester and its skyline. Remember that we are now in orbit around Satan, but we see the beautiful star rising on the left. Betelgeuse, now just 50 light years away, remains bright in the sky even during full daylight, as does Rigel, which is now approximately the same brightness as the planet Venus in our own skies. We see the familiar form of Orion minus Bellatrix, which is now behind us, and safe of course, which we are now in orbit around. The three belt stars of Alnitak, Alnilam and Mintaka can still be seen holding their own in the sky amongst other bright stars in the constellation. Having seen the Mancunian skyline under safe, unfortunately though, back in the real solar system, by the year AD 14,000, Orion would be so far south as it would be no longer visible from the latitude of Great Britain, or no longer appear in the Manchester skies. Indeed, further in the future, many of the bright stars of Orion gradually move away from the constellation due to proper motion. In this list, we see the actual proper motion of the stars in Orion. It's also known, of course, as radial velocity, and the negative result means that stars are moving towards us, and as we see, the star Bellatrix is actually approximating our solar system very rapidly at 8.11 km a second. Mintaka Safe, Rajil, and Al Lila are slightly drifting away, it means they're not going anywhere anytime soon. The red supergiant Betelgeuse, however, is a different case entirely, and it's moving rapidly away from us at a radial velocity of as much as 21.9 km a second. Betelgeuse will still remain bright in our skies for a long time, but over the next millennia and millions of years it will progressively dim become fainter to our eyes. The Orion constellation is of course just a minor part of what we know as the Orion Arm of the Milky Way galaxy. The Orion Arm has approximately 10,000 light years of length and 3,500 light years of width. Safe in a relative cavity, we are in what known as the local bubble, around halfway along the arm's length and still some 26,000 light years from the galactic centre. Isn't it fascinating to find many of the largest stars in our local area Contrary to expectations, we have to look away from the galactic centre. Ritual Betelgeuse, Alnilam, Alnitag and company shine in our night skies facing away from the galactic centre. However, Orion's brightest stars remain a larger distance from Earth than our next door neighbour stars of course, like Sirius Alpha Centauri and Procyon. With the exception of a few stars eventually exploding in a supernova like the giant Betelgeuse, which is predicted to explode sometime in the next million years or so, as it makes its way away from the Sun. Orion will still be recognisable long after most of the other constellations, composed of relatively nearby stars, have distorted into new configurations. The glorious hunter of Orion shines brightly in the distance, with its giant stars of Rigel and Betelgeuse, mother and father of our local area. What a wonder this constellation is, and what a wonder it would be to one day approximate ourselves, Orion at a nearby location, see these giants in their true perspectives. Thanks for watching and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you'd like to contribute to the channel, you can always use the link to buy me a coffee in the description. Take care of yourselves well and look after each other and I'll see you in the next one.